There we go. Welcome to The Way TV. Glad to be back. Hey, the Muslim Brotherhood is sponsoring the in Sacramento at uh, Natomo High School. They're going to have uh, e-job day, and this is the, put on by the Muslim Brotherhood. I got kind of surprised there, so I'm kind of fumbling for words. The staff's doing great. I'm a little old, a little lost. They're doing good. Um, Sacramento, today, today, eh, as we speak, the Muslim Brotherhood, which is the guys based on the Quran says terrify the infidel uh, from the Quran chapter 8 verse 60 and ride steeds of war and kill people maim rape plunder the infidel that means me and you and that's found in my left hand here left hand the Quran and so the high school up there in uh, um, Sacramento is gonna do this but it's put on by the uh, Muslim Brotherhood. I have their flyer here. You can't read it, but we have the flyer. I put it up on my YouTube site today at the Natoma School Number 3 Hijab Day. It says, this is the baloney they're passing out. The hijab is a head covering worn by Muslim women as a symbol of modesty and their devotion to God. I don't think so. Girls, girls, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, girls, be the first one to come out to the library at a public school and uh, that would be morning and the muslim student association which is muslim brotherhood members will assist you in putting your e-job on so you can go from kafir and infidel to being a muslim babe which means that you can put on a tent and walk around you could be a two-legged tent that's called a burqa you can bring any type of rectangular or square scarf that is bought at any store if you do not have scarves, they will provide it for you by the Muslim Student Association, the Muslim Brotherhood. Contact, it gives the name of the person putting it on from the Muslim Student Association, which is Muslim Brotherhood, and there you have it, by the way. I also understand that Temple High School is doing similar stuff here in the greater Los Angeles area, a few miles from the studio. So very soon, we will do a high school outreach there. At the Sacramento High School at Natoma Public High School number three, I have the address and everything, on Friday, March 13th, we will go out there and pass out flyers about Muhammad having sex with a six-year-old girl and this guy here, Ayatollah Khomeini, using that as the basis of Sharia Islamic Muslim law, that you can have sex with babies no matter how old. All right, Adam is going skiing in the snow pretty soon. Are you still excited, Adam? Good. Adam's all excited. And how many girls are going up there? Ashra. Ashra Binit, right? Ten Binit. How do you say that? No Zalga. Okay, that's good. Okay, clip number in honor of Mark, the famous singer, who did a great job, by the way. Great prophecy. I like that. Clip number 13. Clip number 13, please. Time. There's no need to be afraid. 
הבחינה הזו של קישוטי חג המולד במרכז העיר יכולה קצת לתעתע, כיוון שכאן הכל מסודר, נקי, אפילו יש משטרה מסביב, אבל מרחק של כמה קילומטרים מכאן, באזור אחר, שנחשב לכמעט אקס טריטוריה, שם מוכנים חוקי השריעה ולשם המשטרה כמעט לא נכנסת. אירופה, כולם יודעים, הפכה בעשורים האחרונים ליבשת שמועדפת על עשרות מיליוני מוסלמים. פליטים ומהגרי עבודה ממדינות איסלאמיות נקלטים בהמוניהם באירופה, שאולי הצליחה לפתור את מצוקת המחסור בידיים עובדות, אבל באותו זמן יצרה בתוכה גטאות מוסלמים של בדלנות, פשיעה והקצנה דתית. ויותר ויותר מדינות באירופה החשש מלהומות מהגרים הולך וגובר. בגלל המחאה ההמונית ביותר עד כה, החל ממרדף של המשטרה בשכונת מהגרים בעיירה קטנה ליד פריז, והסתיים במותם של שני נערים, מוות שהצית את מה שכונה אז, אינתיפאדת המהגרים של סתיו 2005. זה שטף את צרפת כולה, וגם מוקדי מהגרים נוספים ביבשת. זו הייתה רק המחשה של תסריט האימים של אירופים רבים. הם מוזמנים למסע במדינות אירופה הקלאסית, שבהם זעם המהגרים המוסלמים כבר התפרץ, ובמקומות שבהם החשש מהתלקחות דומה הוביל להתנגשות אמיתית יומיומית בין חברות ותרבויות בין מזרח ומערב. Civil War. What you're watching there cannot be stopped because as Islam biologically grows, you know, in the bedroom and then nine months later you have a member of their army as Islam. And we're going to show the clip later on today, probably in about 10 or 15 minutes, step by step by step, what will happen in Hollywood, in Dallas, in Atlanta, Georgia, in Seattle, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, where they're having a the Super Bowl, all this stuff. Over 1,400 years of prologue, history is prologue. In fact, we, I call it laughingly now, I call it scientific prophecy because prophecy is attached to science. Good science is measurable, observable, and repeatable, and you, have, you can test it with variables and things of that nature. Prophecy, you can't. But in this case, it is scientific prophecy because for 1,400 years, everywhere Islam has gone, and grown, as it grows, it gets more and more dangerous, and it always leads to civil war. There's no way you can get around it. The Trojan horse has come inside Troy, all of the countries in China, in Africa, Boko Haram, in Europe, all over the world, wherever Islam goes, sooner or later, as soon as they reach about 10% of the general population of that country, then 100% of the Muslims join together in civil war against the host country. Okay, so we're going to go to Temple High School here local, and we're going to go up to Sacramento. We've done this hundreds of times. We always have either police or deputy sheriffs to protect us. We work with the city attorney, with the mayor, with the city council, with the district attorney, with the county board of supervisors, with the CIA, with FBI, with Homeland Security. We work with all these guys. Believe it or not, we, we do it. In fact, I have done this hundreds and hundreds of times, and according to my lead attorney, Michael Cometa, then with fact only, not bragging, just facts, I am the number one guy in the state of California, 38 million people, who knows how to put on these First Amendment educational outreaches so we can go out and we can compare what did Jesus do to what did Muhammad do. What did Muhammad do? What did Jesus do? It works really good. The kids love it. Obviously, the Muslims, they don't like it because we have all the proof, the evidence and facts based on Ayatollah Khomeini, I've shown that clip many times where he raped a little girl all night long, four years old, and then the father the next day discussed it, said, why did you do that? And Ayatollah Khomeini shows in the Quran why he was able to rape this little girl all night long. 
and it's based on what did Muhammad do, which is Islam. That's all Islam is. So this civil war, I am working with a group now called Pegida, which is people of Europe against the Islamization of Europe. And they have hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not hundreds of millions of people, non-Muslims in Europe who are absolutely terrified. Pegida, you can go online and, and check it out. It's P-E-G-I-D-A, P like Paul, E like Edward, G like George, I like India, D like David, A like Apple. You can go online, you can check them out, you'll see what they're doing. Now, we're going to the high schools for a specific reason, because we can compare education, the overarching purpose of education under Christianity or the West, and the overarching purpose of education under Islam. Let me do it for you right now. In the West, the overarching purpose of education is to send every child to the school to learn the wisdom of our ancestors that they might all be able to create the land with the highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity. Of course, the wisdom of our ancestors is the Bible, is the Ten Commandments, and I have all kinds of proof, evidence, and facts about that. I'm not going to go into that. I've done that many, many times in the past. But the overarching purpose of education in Islam is radically different, totally different. The overarching purpose of education in Islam is to send boys only, no girls, no girls. The overarching purpose of education in Islam is to send boys only to madrasas to beat them into memorizing the Quran, changing them into little Muhammads, and then sending them on jihad throughout the world to convert the world to Islam, modeled after 7th century Arabia, thereby causing the highest degree of hostility, disorder, slavery, poverty, and misogyny. Misogyny is the hate or mistrust of women. This little girl that's a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, she says that the women wear the hijab to honor God. No, if you go back and look at it, the reason that Muhammad put women into tents called burqas, believe it or not, it's because he had multiple wives. And as he would go out and visit the different wives, then the different wives would complain and get angry and say, I saw you with Aisha, I saw you with Zainab, I saw you with this other gal, and whatnot. So the way Muhammad solved that problem was he put them in a tent. You'd only see their eyes. Put them in a tent called a burqa. That's why he did it. It wasn't to honor God. Don't let them fool you. That's called takia. Takia means lying. Takia is truly one of the five pillars of Islam. They will tell us rapidly and everywhere we go, Oh, Allah Akbar, Islam is wonderful, it's good. Oh, we love it. Islam has helped us all. Islam invented algebra and all these things. No, 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 no. It's called, in Arabic, the word is takia, takia, to lie. That is part of it. The true five pillars of Islam are not go on the uh, hajj over there and walk around the cube seven times, and it's not to give alms to the poor. No, the true bona fide five pillars of Islam are do what Muhammad do, did, do what Muhammad did, do what Muhammad did, do what Muhammad did, do what Muhammad did. Those are the true five de facto as opposed to de jure pillars of Islam. Just like in Christianity, if we wanted to, we, we have our five pillars do. Do what Jesus did, do what Jesus did, do what Jesus did, do what Jesus did, do what Jesus did. Pretty simple. In fact, let's look at right now, we'll continue on with watching the terrorist cells in Texas and the United States and um, Fox News, news commentator thought that the war on terrorism was over, we had won, and then they murdered Charlie Hebdo a couple of weeks ago. We'll show that clip, too. This is a very humorous clip, and it's very true. And it's clip number 21, Adam, number 21. Your ignorance and arrogance concerning Islam and the Prophet, peace be upon him, is infuriating. As a Muslim, I am proud of my heritage, a heritage that dwarfs the West. While your armies were crusading around the world, killing 
innocent people. Karazmi, a Muslim, was inventing algebra. Ever heard of that? How about chemistry? How about glass? Or coffee? We invented those things, not you. No other civilization but ours has given the world so much. So think about that next time you buy a coffee at Starbucks and look through the glass window outside. Abdul Hakim. All right, Abdul, I hear you. It seems I've struck a nerve. Seems like somebody also hasn't prayed to Mecca today. But I am profoundly thankful for the coffee. The other stuff, I think you're a little confused. First of all, the Crusades came centuries after Karazmi. Thought I'd just point that out. Second, algebra was invented by Diophantus of Alexandria, who did so centuries before Muhammad was even born. Karazmi merely wrote down algebra instead of using an abacus. That's more efficient, sure, but it's not inventing algebra. The people who invented the Kindle don't claim to have invented books, do they? Third, Muslims didn't create chemistry. Chemistry's been around long before Muhammad. Ancient Egyptians were actually practicing Alembic distillation as far back as 3000 BC. And after Muslims conquered Egypt and Syria in the 7th century, the Muslim invaders appropriated alchemy, but they in no way invented chemistry. For the record, this is how Muslims claim to have invented all kinds of stuff. They show up as an invading force, they enslave people, they force them to convert, and then they slap an Islamic copyright on top of everything those poor people have already invented or accomplished. Listen, Abdul, I'm not saying Muslims haven't come up with anything. I'm just saying that their contributions have been very small when compared to the contributions of Christian civilization. Let's use your glass example. Even though Muslims did not invent glass, they had equal access to it, just like us in the West. So, Christian civilization took glass and made windshields and bifocals, lasers, the Hubble telescope. Muslims made pretty windows or mosques. Pretty mosques in the desert. Same thing with algebra. Christian civilization took algebra and got calculus out of it. That's how we put a man on the moon. Muslims, on the other hand, used it to write ciphers in the sand. That's it. They didn't do jack with it. No Muslims in space, folks. Abdul, it's not that most Muslims are less intelligent. They're just poorly educated. Islam violently opposes critical thinking, and that's why most Muslims have never even read a Quran. They're illiterate, like Muhammad. And that's one major reason why history favors the West. Christianity teaches us to study, to show ourselves approved. But Abdul, thanks for the coffee. Although, given enough time, we probably would have invented that too. That's pretty humorous. Um, the, the issue on the coffee and whatnot and... Um, Surgery that was allegedly invented by the uh, the Muslims. I get a kick out of it because now the uh, Muslim registered nurses they are resisting washing their hands. They won't do it, and we're having a, a horrible time with that. The reason they won't do it is because they have to pull their sleeve back, and that's the same thing as being a prostitute in Islam. Um, my I guess it's my great niece has become an RN, and she was a little miffed. Uh, because I do so much on Islam and whatnot, and philosophy and political science, theology and whatnot. She said, really, you know, those things, they don't compare to science. To which I said, well, you know, uh, maybe science is pretty good, but how do you use science? How do you use science? And so, for example, I gave her the uh, part about the Muslim registered nurses refuse to roll up their sleeves to wash their hands for fear that they'll be considered to be prostitutes. So you're a registered nurse. You're in there working, slaving over your patient, however many you're doing, all day long and making sure you scrub your hands so that you don't transmit diseases to them. As soon as you're done, the next RN walks in, happens to be a Muslim. She says, I'm not going to wash my hands. And so everything that we do is impacted by morality. I've given this example again before. If you had a hammer, a clock, a cell phone, a medical doctor, and a uh, billionaire guy who's a stock market trader using all of their sophisticated tools, so that, like the Tea Party, for example, comes back and says, we're only interested in economic issues. 
We're not interested in the silly morality. We don't care about social issues. We don't want to talk about homosexuality and child molestation and good grief. We don't want to talk about um, abortion, to which I come back and go, well, you know what? Everything we do is based on the M word. Everything we do is based on morality. For example, you could have a hammer, and you could take that hammer, which is technology. And some of them are very fine-tuned and shows a high degree of technology the way they manufacture them. You could take that hammer, and you could hammer in nails, and you could help out little boys and little girls and moms and dads in their house, or you could take that hammer and crush the skull. What's the difference? Morality. You could have a clock, and you could set that clock to be on time, and you get to the airport on time or to church or school on time. Or you could have that clock, and you can use it for a time bomb. What's the difference? Morality. You could have a cell phone, and you could use that cell phone to talk to grandma or grandpa hundreds of miles away anywhere that you drive. Or you could use that cell phone to trigger a suicide bomber. What's the difference? Morality. You could be a medical doctor, and you could cure a little baby of pneumonia, or you could murder that child called abortion. What's the difference? Morality. And you could be a mega rich stockbroker, stockbroker like Warren Buffett. And you could take all those billions of dollars that you have and you could kind of fulfill the scriptures. True religion is taking care of widows and orphans, James 1.25. Or you could do as the Muslim Brotherhood and the Saudis and the other Muslim nations do. You could take that money and you could fund suicide bombers and jihad and create widows and orphans. What's the difference? Morality. What did Jesus do? What did Muhammad do? Interesting. In every instant, Jesus always helped people. In every instant with Muhammad, he destroyed people. Okay. This, this clip here, to me, is amazing. If I have listened to this clip correctly, how led astray this very intelligent news reporter is, I have to watch it again today, and if I'm wrong, I'll apologize on the air. I won't convert to Islam. Eh, ain't going to happen, but I will apologize. Okay, clip number 15. Clip number 15. I'm Lauren Green for FoxNews.com. Dozens of terror suspects were arrested in Belgium, France, and Germany early Friday, a day after Belgium authorities said that they halted a plot to attack police officers by mere hours. Joining us with reaction is Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter and Fox News contributor Judy Miller. Um, your reaction to this, I mean, I think we're still kind of reeling over Paris and then subsequent um, arrest. And, and, and What's your reaction? I think my reaction is that we're beginning to now understand the magnitude of the radical Islamic terror problem that we all face as Westerners, as people who oppose this kind of perversion of the religion of Islam. You know, when you have this many arrests in different European countries, you understand that we're not talking about one cell or one group of, quote, rotten apples, but 120 individuals who are part of what is now estimated to be 20 different cells that were sleeping or sent either sleeping in place or sent mm -hmm. from the outside to these countries to wreak mayhem, to attack specific targets, law enforcement, Charlie Hebdo, which satirized Islam. In other words, this is not random shooting. This is actual attacks. And so I think in general what I would say is that the president's conclusion that the GWAT, the global war on terror, was over and that the tide of war is receding was perhaps to be charitable premature. You know, you talk about the broader picture, and one of those uh, broader pictures is that the prime minister of, uh, of, 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 of England is here. Yes. What does that signal? Well, the original agenda item that they were going to discuss was another form of terror, Lauren, and that was cyber terrorism and the hacking that's been going on. But these... So she's got a Pulitzer Prize. She's at the top of the apex with CIA-level type intelligence. And she still doesn't understand. She's still going back and calling it radical Islam and a perversion of Islam. That is Islam! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. 
when they come and kidnap your daughter and rape her and rape her to death as they did Ambassador Stevens in Benghazi, they homosexually raped the man to death. Am I being too brutal? Hey, I'm just telling the truth. I don't have a Pulitzer Prize, but you know what? Through Joseph Nasrallah and a number of us, we have been very, very influential in awakening the eyes of the world on Islam. We have been very powerful, and I'm going to leave it at that. But it is absolutely astounding to me. In fact, I, I was interviewed a year ago at the highest level of Fox News in Hollywood, by the way, and they cut most of my stuff out, which I figured they were. I was, you know, but they said, now this is the top corporate level with Brett Baer when they did the interview. And they interviewed me for about 90 minutes. So the top executives of Fox News got to listen as I gave proof, evidence, and facts for 90 minutes in Hollywood to the reporter about the infiltration of the Muslim Brotherhood. Oh, yeah, the Sacramento Ejab, the Muslim Brotherhood are putting this on in Temple High School. They're doing similar things right here, right down the street from us, within five miles of us. And the Fox News people, thank God, they couldn't, while I was doing the interview, they couldn't stop it. It was on the street there, Sunset Boulevard. They're walking up and down the street. People are actually stopping and listening and making comments. And I'm doing the interview with proof, evidence, and facts how Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, the city and the county, California, Dallas, Texas, all 50 states of the United States, including Hawaii, have been infiltrated by the Muslim Brotherhood. So for 90 minutes while they're going through and trying to determine how much of my interview they're going to cut out, which was obviously a lot, and I understand that. I've been involved in TV and radio for years. I understand how they cut it, cut it, cut it. But it was very interesting. Before they aired it, the fellow who had contacted me originally, and we had probably between 75 and 100 phone calls back and forth to his boss, me, coordinating this gigantic interview that they were going to show, they did show on Fox News with Brett Baer being in charge of corporate. The fellow that worked with me all those hours and hours and hours getting it prepared called me and apologized. He said, man, we have never been presented that degree, that much proof, evidence, and facts of the infiltration of the Muslim Brotherhood, not just in the United States, but in Europe. Very fascinating. Now, I am working with a group called Pegida, P uh, People of Europe Against the Islamization of Europe, Pegida. You can look them up. And all the stuff that's growing on, as you watch what's happening in Europe, my prophecy, my prediction is that within five years, five years, France will be in a huge World War II, World War I, American Civil War, huge civil war with Pegida, the people of all of Europe, it's all of the countries of Europe now organizing mass demonstrations. They've had many, many very large marches that are being shut down. And that's what happened to this Judy Miller, who's a Pulitzer Prize winner and a featured Fox News analyst. And she has no idea. She's stunned. She's shocked. She has no idea. She's talking about 20 terror cells with 120 individuals. No, no, let's, let's consider probably in Europe and the United States combined a minimum of 10,000 cells, a minimum. My, my background, Marine Corps officer, Vietnam, intel, fluent in Vietnamese, working with the militia in Vietnam, counter guerrilla warfare, cell warfare, that's what I did. I understand it. I, I either died or I lived based on my knowledge how cell warfare works. Not the stuff like American Sniper. Oh, no, no, no. I operated independently as an 18-year-old kid in charge of a small group of Marines and three Vietnamese, of, of, uh, Vietnamese militia and gathering human intelligence. In fact, I was so successful that the Marine Corps brought me back in, paid me $500 an hour in 
preparation of the Battle of Fallujah II, where the Marines went back and fought Fallujah the second time because the Republican Guard, ISIS, and those guys had all come back. I knew that. I told them all that. That was back in, I think it was 2004. I understand cell warfare. I'm alive. My son, who was suicide bombed and shot up, survived barely because I had taught him what to look for, what to expect. He knew that they were, okay. It is amazing to me that people at that high level, including the CIA, FBI, these people, absolutely refuse to learn and understand how deeply Islam has embedded itself into us through the money of the Saudi Arabians, Qatar, and these other Muslim countries. That's why I showed that clip. I'm the one that's really surprised. My wife was laughing at me while I watched this video, at home, and then I, I, I showed it to her. She says, Stephen, why are you so surprised? This is what God has called you to do. This is your calling. This is your prophetic ministry. But it's still, I have to admit, I can't understand why people don't get it. Okay, from the Quran, in my left hand, there's a reason I do this. In the Quran, from my left hand, showing the Quran, 22 verses that tells Judy Miller that you just watched on that video, a good Muslim does what Muhammad did. And Muhammad murdered, raped, terrorist cells, killed, blew people up, tied two camels to an old woman that bugged him, drove the camels in opposite directions, and so drew and quartered her. Her arms and legs and torso and everything were torn apart. How he had sex with a six-year-old girl and did all these crazy things. So in essence, in essence, under Occam's razor, the philosophy of Occam, Take the complex and reduce the simple. As a battle planner in the Marine Corps, we had to do that. We had to take the complex and reduce the simple or we wouldn't have succeeded. Okay, so here we go. A good Muslim, by definition of the Quran, therefore is a bad person. This is hard for us to accept because we believe in our overarching purpose of education that we send every child to school that they might learn the wisdom of our ancestors that we live in a land with the highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity. But it ain't that way in Islam. In Islam, they send boys only to the madrasas, the schools, to beat them, beat them, go online and look at it, to beat them, to memorize the Quran, to turn them into little Muhammads, send them out throughout the world, jihad, and changing the whole world into 7th century Arabia. Why? Because what did Muhammad do? He lived in the 7th century in Arabia, and that's their goal. That's why they're in America. That's why they're trying to destroy Israel. That's why they're everywhere. Okay. In Islam, Muhammad is considered to be the al-insan, al-kamil, the ideal man or the perfect man. Muhammad is an excellent model of conduct. Really? Killing everybody? Raping? Having sex with six-year-old girls? Quran 33.21. Certainly, Quran 33:21. certainly you have in the messenger of Allah, Muhammad, an excellent exemplar for anyone who hopes in Allah and the latter day and remembers Allah much. If you want to be a good Muslim, you've got to be a bad person. It's really, that's how hard it is. The people who killed Charlie Hebdo were good Muslims, according to the Quran. They were doing, what did Muhammad do? The people that flew the airplanes in the World Trade Center were good Muslims. Muslims, they did what Muhammad would do. Muhammad, he demonstrates an exalted standard of character, Quran 68.4. The Muslim's holy book, the Quran instructs Muslims repeatedly to do what Muhammad did. And here's the 22 verses. We already did Quran 68.4 and Quran 33.21. Oh, Quran 68.4. And most surely you conform yourself to sublime morality. That's another translation, same thing. Okay, so here they are from the Quran. Chapter 3, verse 32. Chapter 3, verse 132. Chapter 4, verse 13. Chapter 4, verse 59. Chapter 4, verse 69. Chapter 5, verse 92. Chapter 8, verse 1. Chapter 8, verse 20. Chapter 8, verse 46. Chapter 9, verse 71. Chapter 24, verse 47. Chapter 24, verse 51. Chapter 24, verse 52. Chapter 24, 
verse 54, chapter 24, verse 56, chapter 33, verse 33, chapter 47, verse 33, chapter 49, verse 14, chapter 58, verse 13, chapter 64, verse 12. If you want to be a good Muslim, you have to be a bad person. In Sacramento, they did the Ejab Day, and in Temple High School, and, and frankly, all the high schools in California and the whole United States, because in California, it's law that they have to teach the Islam in, I believe it's seventh grade. Yeah, seventh grade. And they the textbooks that are all created in the United States are owned by only six or seven companies. And guess what? The Saudi Arabians own significant fractions of those textbook uh, companies. Okay, clip number 14. Well, fear is growing this morning in Texas, where reports suggest ISIS fighters may have formed a new terror cell somewhere along the Mexican border. It's got law enforcement from every branch on high alert, including Gary Painter, the sheriff in Midland County, Texas, who joins us this morning. Sheriff, thank you for being here. What are you hearing? What thank is this you. alert about? Well, I received an intelligence report that said that there was uh, ISIS cells that were active uh, in the Juarez area, which is northern part of Chihuahua State, and uh, that they were moving around over there, that they had uh, uh, just that there was some activity, and uh, for the sheriffs along the border to be on the alert, for all law enforcement to be on the alert, and to be on the lookout for these people maybe trying to come across. Are you saying that ISIS is ready to come across, poised? to perhaps execute what they have threatened to do, attacks on the United States, drown us in our own blood? Is that what you are saying? Well, I'm saying the border is wide open. There is no control on the border. It's not shut off. There's places along the Rio Grande you can walk across. There's no water in it. I worked the border for eight years. I walked back and forth across the Rio Grande. I was in Mexico. I was on this side and uh, never got challenged. And, and there's always a way to get across. There's coyotes that bring those people across for thousands of dollars, but they'll bring them into that area and then wait when the time is right and they'll bring them across the river. Sure, why not? We have found copies or, or people along the, the border where the trails of these people come across have found Muslim clothing, they have found uh, Koran books that are laying on the side of the road or side of the trail. So we know that there are Muslims that have come across and being smuggled in the United States. What is your message for the White House and what is your message for ISIS, ISIL, and terror cells in the making? If they show their ugly head in our area, we'll send them to hell. And I think the United States need to get busy. And they need to bomb them. They need to take them out. Uh, I, I would like for them to hit them so hard and so often that every time they hear a propeller on a plane or a jet aircraft engine that they urinate down both legs. When you do that, then you've accomplished a lot. And I think General Allen being in charge of it, uh, United States Marine Corps, uh, I, I think we're going to have, if they'll let him go, let him do what needs to be done. If they'll hit him and hit him hard and hit him often, we need to shut him off. We need to kill him. I'll give you a big copy of that, Sheriff Painter. We thank you for being with Fox. All right. Um, there you have it right there. And by the way, I do know General Allen. I'm a former Marine Corps officer, and I have exposed General Allen. He's very weak on Islam, does not understand Islam. Nobody in the Pentagon understands Islam. When I talked to them, um, when I was hired by the Marine Corps for $500, I was fired within 45 minutes for telling the truth that Islamic battle planning is based on what did Muhammad do. And their response to me was, what does religion have to do with why we're going to Iraq and Afghanistan. I, I have to admit, I was so stunned at their ignorance that I really didn't have a good response, but that's okay. I learned. I know what's going on. Uh, my son's been to Afghanistan and Iraq. He's been blown up by a suicide bomber. We don't know how he survived, but he did. And he was shot up, and we also know a lot more that I'm not going to disclose to you now. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go to clip number 19. Clip number 19. If you live in the West and are concerned with Islam and the Islamization of your country, this video has a message for you. 
What Islam is Not was published in the frontpagemagazine.com on April 21, 2008 and is an adaptation from a book written by Dr. Peter Hammond, Slavery, Terrorism, and Islam. What Islam is Not Islam is not a religion, nor is it a cult. In its fullest form, it is a complete, total, 100% system of life. Islam has religious, legal, political, economic, social, and military components. The religious component is a beard for all of the other components. Islamization begins when there are sufficient Muslims in a country to agitate for their religious rights. When politically correct, tolerant, and culturally diverse societies agree to Muslim demands for their religious rights, some of the other components tend to creep in as well. Here's how it works. As long as the Muslim population remains around or under 2% in any given country, they will be, for the most part, regarded as a peace-loving minority and not as a threat to other citizens. This is the case in United States, Australia, Canada, China, Italy, and Norway. At 2 to 5%, they begin to convert from other ethnic minorities and disaffected groups, often with major recruiting from the jails and among street gangs. This is happening in Denmark, Germany, United Kingdom, Spain, and Thailand. From 5% on, they exercise an excessive influence in proportion to their percentage of the population. For example, they will push for the introduction of halal food, which is clean food by Islamic standards, thereby securing food preparation jobs for Muslims. They will increase pressure on supermarket chains to feature halal on their shelves, along with threats for failure to comply. This is occurring in France, Philippines, Sweden, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Trinidad and Tobago. At this point, they will work to get the ruling government to allow them to rule themselves within their ghettos under Sharia, the Islamic law. The ultimate goal of the Islamists is to establish Sharia law over the entire world. When Muslims approach 10% of the population, they tend to increase lawlessness as a means of complaint about their conditions. In Paris, we are already seeing car burnings. Any non-Muslim action offends Islam and results in uprisings and threats, such as in Amsterdam and in other western cities, with opposition to Muhammad cartoons and films exposing Islam. Such tensions are seen daily, particularly in Muslim sections in Guyana, India, Israel, Kenya, and Russia. We've shown this a number of times. We got to the magic number 10%. You saw France in there where they're burning up the cities and stuff. This has been going on for years. And a French leadership and a UK leadership and sadly George W. Bush and Obama and like Judy Miller continuing to come back and say the perversion of Islam? No, no, no. Okay. Um, under Bush, and Obama both, the Muslim Brotherhood was frequently going into the State Department. And there's an article here today I found where people are surprised again. Now, George W. Bush met with the Muslim Brotherhood many times. I have showed clips where George Bush is with the Muslim Brotherhood and talking about how Islam is hope and peace. No, a good Muslim, 22 verses in the Quran says, a good Muslim doesn't care about hope and peace. He cares about PMS, power, money, and sex. He cares about RPM, religious, political, military. He cares about MPH, Muslim, post, uh, Muslim per host ratio of every country. And he also, then, what we do in response, self-defense, the Latin legal concept is non abet legum, self-defense knows no law. And so we respond back 
as Christians trying to protect our wives and our children, and then it gets published that we are evil, wicked people for doing self-defense. Okay, so this is a news article from January 28th yesterday. Muslim Brotherhood aligned leaders hosted at the United States State Department. Um, says the State Department hosted a delegation of Muslim Brotherhood aligned leaders this week for a meeting about their ongoing efforts to oppose the current government of President, President uh, Sisi of Egypt. And by the way, here at this studio, all of the Egyptian Christians like President Sisi. I like President Sisi because he has stepped in and is protecting the Christians. In fact, General Sisi, in charge of Egypt now, he actually has his generals in uniform going to the Coptic church and the evangelical churches over there. And outside, there's hundreds of armed Egyptian soldiers to protect the Christians. Under the Muslim Brotherhood of, of uh, Morsi, who was loved by Bill Clinton and Obama, man, they were murdering and slaughtering and burning down the churches. Sisi's taken over. Another reason why General Sisi likes the Christians is because when the Christians are in the military or working in Egypt, governmental jobs, they use a Christian basis of do everything to glorify God, and they do the best they can, and they do a much better job than the Muslims. And lo and behold, there's two huge things. The Christians don't lie because we're told to come let us reason and tell the truth. And we don't steal. So out there in the Muslim world, you will find a lot of Christians working in finance because they don't steal the money and they can be trusted. And by the way, when the Tea Party says that we only care about economic issues, we don't care about moral or social issues, well, if you're dabbling in the stock market, the first thing you have to have is honesty, morality, or your money's going to disappear just look at old Bernie Madoff, how he made off with all the money. So it's interesting to me, in a humorous way as a political scientist, that the Tea Party would say, we don't care about morality, we only care about economics. Well, in capitalism, in any form of having money and you're going to invest money, you have to have a moral, trustworthy person, a fiduciary relationship with the person you're going to give the money to. One member of the delegation, a Muslim Brotherhood-aligned judge in Egypt, posed for a picture while at Foggy Bottom, where they have the State Department, in which he held up the Islamic group's notorious four-finger rabia symbol. Now, what that is, that four fingers, in fact, if you want to do some real simple investigations, go on Facebook and type in different Muslim names of Muslims in the United States who are on Facebook. For example, Hussam Ailoush used to have a picture of himself with the four fingers, meaning his Muslim brotherhood. And then I exposed it so much on this TV show that he tore it down. And then he puts up all of this baloney, oh, love, dove, peace, can't we all just get along? A good Muslim <laughs> does not get along. A good Muslim, chapter 8, verse 60 of the Quran, goes out, hunts down, and murders and rapes and kills Christians and Jews. Okay, so this judge from Egypt was a, a member of this delegation. His name is Walid Sharabi. is the Secretary General of the Egyptian Revolutionary Council, Muslim Brotherhood, and a spokesman for Judges for Egypt, a group reported to have close ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. No, not close ties. They are Muslim Brotherhood. Now, this stuff has, with Judy Miller that I showed has permeated itself through our higher ranks of intelligence, and the news media and everybody else. This next guy is in charge of the Director of Intelligence for the whole United States. All 16 of the different intelligence services report to him. His name is James Clapper. He's a retired Lieutenant General, three-star general of the Air Force. But listening to him when he says that the Muslim Brotherhood is largely secular, you will hear it. And this is the guy in charge of all of intelligence. And Judy Miller, that reporter for Fox News would go to this guy to get information, and this guy would say, the information that I'm talking about is false and not true, that I'm a liar, 
and perhaps I'm a lunatic, and yet everything that I do, I do bases when I was a Marine Corps officer, it was good then. I've been involved in multiple First Amendment educational lawsuits, and I've had no problem communicating with the judges on that issue. But for some reason, James Clapper and the different people, John Brenner in charge of CIA, my old boss, my old boss for real, I used to work directly for the leader of NASA, Charles Bolden. You can go online and watch him and type in Charles Bolden, comma, NASA, comma, Al Jazeera, watch the interview where he says, well, President Obama tasked me with making NASA Muslim friendly. All right. Adam's so excited about going skiing up there in Big Bear. I'm not sure if he's listening. Are you listening, Adam? Oh, uh, sort of. Is he listening? Okay. Clip number 20. Clip number 20. Let me just speak briefly to uh, the Mu Muslim Brotherhood as an international uh, movement, and then I'll ask uh, Director Mueller to speak specifically to it uh, here uh, domestically. Um, and this, the reason I do that, of course, is because this is uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is prominent in what's going on now in, in right. Egypt and elsewhere in the Middle East. The, the term Muslim Brotherhood is, a ver is an umbrella term for a variety of movements. Um, in, in the case of Egypt, a very uh, heterogeneous group, uh, largely secular, secular, which has eschewed violence and has decried uh, al-Qaeda. Umbrella group, largely secular. <laughs> this is the guy. This is the guy that's in charge of... He's a director, national director of intelligence. Uh, I, I can only laugh. Again, I, I can only laugh. I can only laugh. I can only laugh. I need a good laugh. Okay, clip number five. Clip number five. Hamsa. أنا قدام الهدف منتبه كتير كتير منيح عيوني عشرة عشرة ما تعتر هم خلص خلص بدي سكر في شخص راكد لهون هيئته الانتحار يلا باي باي الموت إيران الموت حزب الشيطان الموت إيران الموت حزب الشيطان لحظة ليه مستعجل بعدي عن دربي أحلى ما فجر حالي فيكي ليه مستعجل بدي فجر حالي بمبنى الشياطين انت مين أنا حورية حورية ايه عندك شاك؟ بس ليش انت هون؟ المفروض تكوني ناطرتيني بالجنة من كتر محبة لإلكن وجعتوا لي قلبي، رفقاتك اللي سبقوك كتير عم بيعانوا، تصور في واحد وصل لفوق مقطشين ايديه تنيناتن، هيدا كيف بده يفك بعض لونه؟ ايه قل لي كيف؟ عن شو عم بمزح معك؟ فقررنا نحن الحوريات ننزل لهون واستأجرنا شقة لقدام شوي وجيت على نطرتك لأنه منعرف مين بده يفجر حاله وين قبل التفجير شو بدك مني أعمل؟ شيل عنك هز النار ومشي معي لقدام شوي كل الحوريات ناطرينك بنعمل جلسة مساج وبعدين بنعمل جلسة أكل ثمار البحر وبعدين وبعدين بيجي السيد تمام وبيلقطك يا هميلي ظبط <تصفيق> ظبط الكريم كمين؟ يعني اني انت منك حوريه؟ <تصفيق> حوريه يا حوري اندبوري هيدي بلا من معنى ميرسي زازا ليكي روحي على الهدف رقم اثنين في معلومات عن واحد انتحاري هميلي مثل الاخ يمكن يهاجمه <تصفيق> بيزو زازا باي <تصفيق> ماشي قدامي ماشي قدامي يا حبيبي ماشي قدامي قلت لي بدك مساج كيف هالمساج منيح هالمساج منيح هالمساج منيح هالمساج وهنا مساج عطيس مساج عطيس يا حبيبي That's pretty cute good way to end this stuff is deadly serious I showed that to kind of lighten it up a little bit and as I said my own son was suicide bombed and he's had multiple surgeries he's still alive praise God uh, he's got insights that I cannot disclose whatsoever and 
worked at the highest level of the intelligence community in Afghanistan. I cannot tell you what he did, but he confirms everything that I'm saying. Until next week, adieu. في كتير طرق وسط الحياة